Welcome back to the channel, everyone. Now, if you've watched any of my behind the scenes videos where I'm tethered, you will have seen the software Capture One. When I'm shooting tethered, I need to be able to count on the software to bring in my images and display my results in real time. I would argue that these days on set, uh, dependability on your tethering software is one of the most important aspects of a commercial photo shoot. Whether it's you, your clients, or the talent watching your computer, you need to count on the fact that your images are showing up on the screen. Now, years and years ago, I used to use Lightroom for this part of my workflow before I knew about Capture One. And it only took one big commercial shoot where I had a digital tech running the Tether Capture Kit. He was using Capture One and I quickly realized why. It just simply worked without crashing or freezing up, unlike my Lightroom experience. So after that shoot, I tried the software and I've been using it ever since. Now, since I know switching software and using something for the first time can be pretty intimidating, uh, so I thought I would make a quick video on how to set up or how I set up and use Capture One for my photo shoots. Several of y'all have also requested this too, so uh, let's just jump into it right after we roll that intro. Okay, so I thought I would just set this video up as if you went to the Capture One website and downloaded the software. They have a free 30-day trial, by the way, so there's really nothing to lose. If you're serious about tethering and maybe even, even editing your work, uh, you will want to give the software a try. Uh, this is not a sponsored video, by the way, um, but if you use the links I placed below, it does help out this channel a little so that would be uh, greatly appreciated. Uh, if you do visit their website, you will also see they have several different options for subscriptions. And one of their options is a one-time payment to own the software. Full disclosure, I've opted for the prepaid annual subscription plan. And they're actually offering 30% off of that plan currently for the next couple weeks. So that uh, might be worth a look. Uh, they also have bundles with styles, which are like presets for Lightroom and uh, Camera Raw. There's uh, plenty of information on the site about all that stuff, and I'm pretty sure you'd be better off serve re served reading it than hearing me try to explain it and speak English at this point. So anyway, uh, let's just kind of jump into it. I've got a real rudimentary setup set up here. <laughs> And I'm just gonna kinda go through my workflow on the computer of how I set up my shoots um, with Capture One um, on the computer. And then we'll just shoot a couple shots so you can see them come across. And I'll show you where the files are and basically demonstrate that there's nothing difficult about this. And there's a reason why a lot of people use it for their tethering workflow. So let's jump right into it. Uh, so the first thing that I normally do is uh, create a folder uh, on my uh, computer. And I'll usually do this um, before the photo shoot. So today we'll create a new folder. We'll just label this Q1 test. Uh, and so this will be the folder that we use with Capture One. And inside this folder, Capture One will place the files and it's the set of folders that um, it'll use to drop those those files in, depending on uh, how you have it set up. All right, so we're just gonna go down here and open up Capture 120. And I've cleared out a lot of my older uh, sessions and stuff. On my laptop, I keep this thing pretty streamlined because I do all my uh, retouching work uh, here at the studio and so I'll offload everything so this thing is always ready to go. Same with my iMac. Uh, so when you open it up the first time you'll see they've got like this what's new type of thing where you can look at these styles that I was mentioning, mentioning earlier. Uh, they've got tutorials. Um, you know these are all great. I mean, there's really not a better resource than right here on their website uh, to 
kind of work your way through this uh, software. Um, they in the past, well, in the I guess past couple years, they've really seemed to advance uh, the editing or retouching end of things. Uh, so this is becoming a really powerful piece of software, and I'm seriously considering changing my workflow to uh, from Camera Raw to Capture One, and and editing most of my work here instead of um, you know going the bridge and then Photoshop route, unless there's a lot of heavy compositing type stuff, because I just feel like uh, a lot of the uh, color controls and stuff um, over here uh, are just a little bit ahead, a little more um, where you can, they're a little more dialed in than I think even Camera Raw uh, is these days. And so you know, maybe in the future we, I can, Kind of run through and, and maybe do some edits on here uh, to show those differences but i'm kind of jumping ahead so anyway let's kind of get back on it so all this will kind of pop up you can obviously uh, set this to not show up on startup i just i just kind of keep it where it does that um, and so what we're going to do now is we're going to go under file a uh, new session so that means new session is virtually um, or basically a new photo shoot so we'll click that, it comes with a dialog window here. So we'll name this, uh, let's name it, keep it Capture One Test. And then I like to name these usually with a, um, a studio, uh, add that on to uh, my folder names, my interior folder names, just because the apparent folder will not have the studio part, it'll just be kind of the basic name. That's just something I do. And so, uh, you'll see where it's already kind of picked that in, in the pictures folder, which it natively does on the new um, software. Hush, Fritzy. Uh, so here we go. So we go back in, into the pictures folder here, and then here's the folder that we uh, created right at the beginning um, of this process. So we click on that, so that's chosen. Uh, you see it's right here again. Uh, these are the subfolders that will be in there. There will be a capture folder, which is everything that comes from the shoot. Uh, selects, you can choose um, when you go through and you can rate your, your files and have them show up in the selects folder. Uh, if you go over here and do some color editing uh, and then output the image, that, that will show up in the output folder. And then throwing away stuff is in the trash folder. So, um, and then there's your, your capture name is the Q1. Uh, test that you know studio um, so click click OK we're not gonna back that up now uh, and so here we are we just have our empty um, gallery basically this is our um, session and so what we'll do over here we'll go you'll see we've got these different tabs over here uh, this is basically your other folders, other selects, um, session folders, session albums, all this kind of fun stuff. This is your tethering section here. So you've got little camera icon here. So this is what we're gonna focus on uh, today with this. So it's showing no camera connected. Uh, I don't have my camera on yet. So let's turn the camera on. All right, camera turned on and so then it instantly pops up here. Uh, I mean, you see it's just really quick. Using a Tether Tools USB-C to USB-C uh, cable, just by the way, for um, people that are wondering what kind of cables <laughs> I use. Uh, so right here we've got um, basically all of our camera information. So it's another good way of when you look on the screen after you take an image, if something's a little bit off, you can actually refer to the screen here and you know do that at the same time rather than look here and then go back to your camera, uh, reset stuff. So you can, you know, you get some feedback right here instantly. Uh, you can also pull up a live view um, of the camera depending on the type of shoot that you're doing. You can kind of see what I just have a stormtrooper model set up here. Uh, and so if you're doing still life type stuff, uh, you know, this, this is amazing. You've got your live view um, and you can do all kinds of different, uh, working different, fo your focus, uh, different live view controls, um, you know, the navigator to the screen itself. Um, so, you know, all that is available in here. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to, when I'm normally doing uh, a photo shoot, I'll obviously be holding the camera. So I'm going to pretend like 
we're here doing that. I've got my strobe on. I've got one strobe over here. So, and let's just take a couple shots here so you can just see them. They just start coming over here. And I've also, earlier, I guess it's been a couple months now, I created that Tethering 101 video. And so I will have it up here where you can link to that. And that goes through a little more of the tethering setup because obviously we're focusing on the software here. So this is, it's so easy. Um, obviously, and your files are showing up here on this film strip on the right-hand side. You've got uh, you know, your image coming here. You can rate these images just right down here. You can give them a star system. Uh, and this is great for clients. What I'll do usually at the end of a shoot if possible. I will have all of my clients um, scroll through all the images we've uh, shot and they can rate them, you know, from five to, you know, zero stars basically. Uh, and then what I normally do, a uh, little workflow tip, and uh, what I do is have my client go through all the shots, rate them at four stars. Then we come up here, sort them by rating. And so your, your higher rated uh, images will be at the top. And once we get all the four star images, then they can scroll down through the four star images and then pick from those and, ra and raise them to uh, five star. So that is a great way to edit down a photo shoot. And that gives your client peace of mind when they leave. Uh, they know that what, you know, what you've got in the can. And so everyone uh, it just makes the job so, so easy. All right, so we've um, basically, you know, we've taken, I'll just take a couple more so we have them in here. You can see that we can, you know, we can fire right here from the screen. Uh, you've got, you know, camera settings. This gives you all the, we can change aperture values right here if you want to do it. This one should be a little bit darker. There you go. Uh, so all this um, information is in here. You can make it as complicated as, as you want and as simple as you want. Uh, it is it's just a great piece of software. I, I rarely, obviously nothing is, is perfect, but I've rarely, um, especially in the latest itineration here of with Captain 120, rarely do I have a system freeze up or software quit, any of that type of thing. Um, back in the day, I mean, it's just, uh, you know, the, the worst thing that could happen is your uh, software freezes and you don't know that it's frozen and you're still taking pictures, working with uh, the talent, and you look over and, it's, you know, you've gone maybe a minute or more taking pictures and nothing's come across and nothing was being saved to your memory card, so it, just a complete loss, so that's kind of a worst case scenario. This uh, rarely, if ever, happens now with Capture One. So uh, I can't really speak um, you know, high enough about this software. So we'll go in. You can see right here, we're, we're just uh, gonna go in and check out the file structure. Um, so back here, this is where we set up that original folder. Here's the test studio. So right here, you've got um, your capture folder. And then here are all your shots right here, all the raw format shots. And you could, um, you can now open these with Bridge. You can uh, drag the, you know, this into Photoshop. Uh, you can do whatever you want to with these files. So, as I mentioned, there's a 30-day free trial, so you can get this software, download it, put it on your computer, uh, rig up something like I've got right here, uh, take some shots, um, bring them into your computer, uh, play around with them some, uh, you know, get comfortable with it, and you know, use it for your next photo shoot. So that's about it. If, if there are more questions or comments, I, I want to keep this one pretty, pretty brief. I mean, this is when I set up a photo shoot, this is exactly the way I do it. So, um, and then after this part is where I've been uh, then going using Bridge uh, to, oh, to kind of basically um, sort the files in Bridge. The star ratings, will they will transfer into Bridge, so you'll already have that there. And then I take them into Photoshop. This has been my workflow now for a long while, but as I mentioned earlier, I think I'm gonna start probably doing more color work in Capture One, and then for heavy lifting, compositing, that type of stuff, then go to, um, to Photoshop. But if you've got any more questions, um, you know, feel free to drop them below. I can maybe expand on the Capture One once I do some more um, editing in the software. 
So my camera battery died on that. So anyway, um, I think we've got everything in here that we <laughs> need to get. If you uh, feel like you've learned anything here, this video was worthy, you know, give me a thumbs up. You know, my camera battery's dying. Uh, hit that subscribe button if you like to see more content like this in the future. And don't forget that little bell so uh, YouTube will let you know when I'm here. Uh, find me on social media at Quants Photo on uh, Instagram and Twitter. Please be safe and um, healthy out there. Uh, and I will hopefully be here <laughs> with charged batteries in the next one. <laughs>